Today, my topic is about five reasons to buy property now, in especially in Malaysia. Hi, Huang Yun Chu. Hi, Ni Hao. Right. Okay. So, yeah, before this, let me introduce myself first. My name is Johnson, team leader from Propnex Malaysia, from Propnex Cheras branch. Right. So, today, uh, again, I will be sharing about five reasons to buy property now. Because why I came up with this topic? Because a lot of people are actually asking. As we today, you can see today is uh, the day of, of October 2021, where uh, currently is like we are only two months away from the end of 2021. We are actually two, two months away from 2022, right? So should we buy property now? Now as in like within these two months, especially, right? So before 2022, before before 2022, before our new our new year, our next year, new year resolution come up, right? So if buying a property is in your new year resolution in 2021, so maybe you can you should consider to watch this video um until the end, right? Because until the end, I will share all these five reasons, which I think is extremely important, right? So, okay. So shall we start now? Hi, Sia. Hi, Mace. Hi, thank you to, to come in to support me, right? So of course, not just support, lah, but also we should, I think we can learn together. So if you have any comments, right? So along the way, I will be sharing this, all these five reasons. So along the way, if you have any thoughts, if you have any, um. If you have any thought, if you have any ideas that you would like to suggest, you can also type in the chat box, right? So we can discuss together, right? So in the end, we also have a Q&A session, right? So yeah, so let me get the ball rolling, right? So let me start sharing my screen first. Okay, just a moment. Okay. Right, so I can you, can you guys see my screen? I think I need to use my phone to see the comment. So just give me a second. Okay, right. So I think um, you guys can see my screen right now, right? Because I'm not so sure because like, um, let me check on my phone. Okay, yeah, so basically, this is um, the topics. This is my poster, right? Five reasons why is now the best time to buy property, right? So before I start my sharing, right? Just a disclaimer, right? So this is just like uh, why every, this is uh, the disclaimer for this uh, presentation. So basically this presentation, I have actually done a lot of uh, some research and things like that, right? So basically it depends, it depends on the, uh, the things that I have now. Lah. All right. So this presentation is not in any way intended to provide investment advice or recommendation to buy, sell, or lease properties or any form of property investment. Right. So now let me start on my first reason. Okay. Right. Because uh, before we start, we can also check on the, I think we currently, we can see a lot of like properties is on sale. Sometimes we also see like auction. Okay. So sometimes you see like, what well, should I buy it now? All right. So yeah. So the first one, I'm going to talk about is, is this, right? So let me come back here. Yep. So the reason number one is definitely HOC, right? So because HOC, um, we are actually starting, started from last year, right? Last year, you can see here, so from last year, 1st of June, 2020, and until 31st of May, 2021, then after that, it further, at, uh, further extended to end of this year, right? So at, how is this, how does this HOC actually affect our pricing and how does it affect our buying um, decision, right? So from here, you can see, right, over here, I, I'm not going to read it uh, word by word, sorry, because I think I'm not doing a lecturer here, right? I'm not a lecturer. So, so just um, some sharing with you guys. So you can see uh, from the, in this HOC, under this HOC campaign, yeah, you can actually save a lot from this MOT stamp duty and also loan stamp duty, which you can accept up to house price of 1 million ringgit. Also for loan stamp duty is accept up to house price of 2.5 million, right? So you can see here, the property price is have to be from 300 to 2.5 million. I think a lot of people are already very familiar with HOC because it's been like, like I mentioned just now, it has been introduced to Malaysia since quite some time ago, right? But a lot of people don't know that is that HOC actually is not that, oh, uh, for example, you have you want to rush before, before it expires, right? Before this HOC expires, which is on the 31st of December, 
So a lot of people think that, hey, uh, I book my unit, lah. I, I make a booking on the 1st of December. Am I entitled for this exemption or not? The answer is no. Uh. Why say so? Because actually for this one, right, the sales and purchase agreement have to be stamped by 31st of December. Right? So normally it takes actually a few weeks to, to, to do so. Like after, after, you, after you sign your sales and purchase agreement, actually then you will send it to the developer to sign the sales and purchase agreement. Okay? Then if they have, they have uh, like a three, if it's a three parties thing, then you have to, sign, to send to another party again to sign the sales and purchase agreement. So you can see they actually go to a lot of parties. After that, you have to send to the uh, government then to do the stamping. So uh, it actually takes a lot of times. Right? So this, uh, this especially... Um, I would say because for HOC, right, it's only for new development only, right? So normally it, it is done by that batch, batch uh, it's like batch by batch. It's not like you're doing a sub-sales or secondary uh, market where everything is handled by uh, individually, right? So this one is done by batch by batch. So I would say it's, tech, it's quite time consuming. So if it is better if you can make decision faster, right? If the buyer can make decision faster and and go for the documentation, proceed the documentation, uh, documentation faster as well, right? So other than that, how does the HOC affect you, right? So let us look at the next slide. So we can see on the exemption, right? Is on uh, just I mentioned it is on uh, the instruments of transfer is the which is the MOT, right? And also the instruments of securing loan, which is the loan stamp duty, right? So you can see. Is actually accepted up to like like even like one uh up to one million and also one up to two point two five million right. So next we can look at here. So how much can you save from here, right? So I think this one is actually more important because a lot of people say things like oh MOT stamp duty no stamp duty. Sometimes it's only like words only. We don't know how much we can save. So here I have done some uh, example for you, some sample for you. Like if you are purchasing a house price of 500,000, 700,000 700, and also 1 million ringgit. Right? So for this one, uh, feel free to take a screenshot and also so that you can refer in the future easier. Okay. So of course the price, when, uh, when the price change, the stamp duty you can save is also ch uh, changed also. So you can see the total saving is actually increasing. The, the, the higher the price, of the of the property you buy right the more you can save actually right so i would say this definitely is the best uh, reason to buy now right so of course some people also also ask me like who oh, will the hoc be, ex be extended since it has been extended before or since it has been like um stopped already then be reintroduced to the market again right so this one i would say i don't know Right, I really don't know. I really don't know. Will it be extended or will it be stopped by six uh, for for six months? Then start again, or will it maybe be stopped forever? Will, will not be introduced to uh, the current market forever? Right. So for this one, I will say my answer is I don't know. Right. If I know, I really can, I can I can go to the thing and bet some money at it. Right. So that's why I say this. Why buy now? Because we have it now. We are, we are we still having this HOC now, which is the reason why we should buy now also. Right. So we for me, I will I wouldn't want to bet on the future, I would say. Okay. So you can see if you are if your the, the property you are interested is one million ringgit, you can see how much you can save now, which is about twenty eight thousand five hundred ringgit. Right. So I will say this one is actually quite a lot because thirty eight thousand you can actually do a lot of things with this money, right? You are, you have to go for renovation, even or even if you are buying this house for your new newly wet. If you are newly wet, then you can also go for the honeymoon. Chuti Chuti Malaysia, lah. maybe not, not overseas, lah, but you can at least you can go for like some Chuti Chuti or you can use it in, in other stuff, right? So yeah, so basically this is the first reason of uh, my today's topic, right? So what's the second reason? Okay, so the reason too is that I think this one I also have mentioned before in my previous uh, presentation a few months ago, which currently we are having our lowest OPR rate, right? Our open our OPR rate. So um, actually the OPR rate has been, you can see on the graph on my table, not graph, my table on my right hand side. Uh, you can see it has been dropped so many times, right? On the 1st of January 2020, which is pre-MCO, which is before the MCO, it was about 3%. So you can see up until July, right? Up to July, 7th of July, is the OPR rate is only 1.75%. So some people also ask me, what does this has to do to me, right? So Maybe some people know that, oh, maybe I had an interest drop. So maybe my installment drop, lo. like that only. Ma. So if I have existing money installment, then maybe it drop also. Lo. Okay, so maybe it also drop for maybe a few months only. Ma. Maybe drop for one, two years. Then maybe a few years later, it will increase back again. So I still have to pay the same thing. Ma. So 
why should I buy now? Okay, so actually, um, I would say this actually also have a lot of impact on uh, our buying decision. Why say so, right? So let me show you another sample. Okay, so how does OPR affect you? So you can see, right, on the left-hand side is when the OPR was 3%, the bank interest is about roughly 4.2%, right? So you can see in, in the... Uh, on, on you can see that for the price of three hundred thousand ringgit, this is the when the uh, the price here is actually referring to the house price, uh, which is the sales and purchase agreement price, right? So you can see the money installment is about one thousand two, and the minimum salary if you based on the DSR, DSR is the debt service ratio, right? So this is debt service service ratio basically is the one uh it's like the calculation the bank use it to depends on your um to see if your loan can, can, can pass or not, like if you can obtain the loan or not, right? So you can see the minimum salary based on DSR is about 50%. So you need to have at least about 2,500 ringgit, okay? So this is like the minimum, right? But if you look at the OPR, when the OPR is 1.75%, which is about, like, which is now the, and the bank interest, you can go as low as 2.9%, right? So the minimum salary based on DSR 50%, right, it's only 2,300 ringgit. Although you are buying the same property or the same price of the, uh, of, uh, if, although you are buying the same price, right, of buying the property in the same price. So same 300,000 ring, 300, ringgit, but the minimum salary required is only 2,003 instead of 2,005. So, of course, when the when the price the when the price of the property is increasing, like for example, let us uh, compare on the one million ringgit, right? So on the one million ringgit, when the OPI is three percent, the minimum salary based on DSR fifty percent, you have to go for about eight thousand two hundred ringgit. But when now the OPI is one point seven five percent, right? So your minimum salary based on DSR fifty percent is only six thousand nine hundred ringgit. So I would, you can say that with your current salary. Compare last year and this year, pre-MCO and post, not post, we are still in the MCO. Okay, pre-MCO and now, right? You can actually purchase a higher price property. Yeah, compared to last time. Okay, so this one actually make, make you have a wider range of product for you to choose also, right? Because once the OPR, like once the OPR go back to 3%, then you need to actually have more salary, you need to earn more salary to buy the same price of property. Okay, right. So this is what I uh, what I want to mention is how the OPR can actually affect your buying decision, right? So with the lower OPR, just to summarize, the, with the low lower OPR, actually you can buy the property with higher price. Okay, right. Next. Okay, so next is the drop in supplies, right? So if you uh, this one I'm quite glad that I actually took economy economy subject in my high school and in my in my uni time, right? So yeah, we all know that the price is actually kind uh, hugely affected by the uh, supplies of demand of the product or the service, right? So currently, uh, if you look at, if you have read the news recently, we can see that there actually is there's a drop in supplies in, uh, I would say Klang Valley, uh, in Selangor and also KL, right? For the new projects, okay? Right. So here are some of the studies, right? some of the graph that you can see here, and uh, some of the information of the database. So you can see here, right, um, in 2020, for the first nine months, right, from maybe, uh, basically it's from the January until September, there are about 30 projects, 30 new projects. And for 2021, there are about 35 new projects. Then you see that, hey, got more projects, they didn't matter. Isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't the supply still a lot? Because a lot of people still saying that uh, there's a supply, uh, surplus in the in the supply side. Huh? That's why the price is the price cannot cannot be increased. Either, things like that, right? But if you see here, you look at here. Be sorry, I uh, have to say uh, apologize because all the all the all the words here are in Chinese because I couldn't find it in English, right? So basically, I will I will just uh, explain a bit for those who cannot read uh, Chinese, right? So on the left hand side. It's actually uh for the first nine months in 2021 for the Selangor for, for the Selangor area, right? So we are stating about all the price per square foot and things like that. And on the right hand side is basically on, on KL, right? So on what I want to emphasize actually on this bottom two, right? So this one is actually based on uh the first this is the, the, the number of new projects. Right, so this one is actually 2020, the first nine months of 2020, and also the first nine months in 2021. So you can compare it, there, there are actually more projects, okay, more projects, but 
the number of units are actually dropping because over here this is the this is the number of units so you can see here right 2020 the first nine months there are only there are about 14,000 units be introduced to the market right but in 2020 for the first nine months right there are only 10,000 units meaning meaning to say that right the numbers of units introduced to the markets are dropping and it's not by like one two percent. It's not by like five percent. I would say this one is about one third already because it's about four thousand units, all right? It's about one third. It's about twenty plus percent reducing. All right. So what happened when when the when the supplies drop? Right. So when the when we, we all know about the, the 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 economy, right? When the supplies drop, then ah, never mind. Then what I will I will explain to you later, right? I will have I have a graph to show to you. Okay. So we move on to the next one. So other than we are not, of course, we are not just looking at the um, number of units only, right? We are we also are looking at the price. So we can see, right? We because what we want to study about the developers, what are the projects, what are the unit types that the developer are, are coming up now, are introducing to the market. So we can see here, right? Comparing on the let's let's look at the, the one on the left hand side. So the one in the middle basically is the number of is the size. Right, the size of the layout. For example, this one is 600 square feet, 800, 600 to 800 square feet, 801 to 1000 square feet, and so on. Right, so the maximum this one is more than 2000 square feet. So you can see here in 2020 and 2021, those you can see, um, of course, the number is actually reducing. It's reducing, you can see here. Smaller size, uh, you can see the developer are actually building lesser of the smaller size uh, layout. Especially you can see here from the 600 square feet all the way to 1005, which is actually is majority of us are actually looking at this at this range of layout, right? From 600 to 1005 square feet. Okay. But you can see here for more when uh, we are looking at a project that more is more than 200, sorry, 2000 square feet, right? It's actually up to 60%. 60% of the of the developments are more than 2000 square feet. So what does this mean? It means that actually the developer instead of focusing on the projects that uh, more, more people can afford, they are actually focusing on a bigger unit, on a bigger unit because they know, they maybe they know that they study the market and it's actually, maybe maybe it shows that, hey, people who are wealthy, they can still buy property, right? So maybe this is why they are, looking, they are building uh, property that is more than, that is larger, the layout is larger. So you can see on the right-hand side, which is the price. So you can see when the, when, of course, when the, when the size of the layout is increasing, the price of the, the the price is also increasing as well. Okay, so you can see, developer are now focusing on projects that is more than one million ringgit, right? So which is also um the majority I would say in Malaysia we are looking at property at about five hundred and lower or or seven seven hundred thousand and lower. So you can see they are actually focusing on one million and above. So what does this mean? Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah, come back to supply and demand. So you can see that um, the supply of the units are actually decreasing, right? The supply of the new units are decreasing. So when the supply of the units are decreasing and the demand, let's say if the demand is still the same, so it will move towards on the left, okay? Because when we will talk about economy, right? The sub, when the, where the supply and demands meet, right? So it, this is where, the, where it is the equi equilibrium, which is where you set the price. Okay, where you set the price. Okay, so for here, if let's say the supplies are dropping, but yet the demand is still the same, right? So you can see the price are actually going to back, going back up will become, maybe it will be around here. Okay, so the price will, will actually start to increase already. So if we don't buy the property in this, in this few months or maybe in this few years, the price is, in, the, in the future is still going to increase as well. All right, so of course it's not just supply and demand. I'm going to talk about another thing. Okay, reason four, which is the rise in cost of building material. I think this one is also uh, appears in the in our news. I think almost every month, almost every month, we are seeing this: the cost of the steel, the cost of uh, the building material, the construction material are all increasing in price. Okay, so this one is the one that I abstract, I abstract from the uh, Borneo post online. So you can see that statistic department find construction costs higher in most states last month. So this one is actually um, uh, happening in Malaysia. All right. So of course, I, th I think this construction cost thing right, is not only in Malaysia, right? So if we look at the next slide. So this one is actually for uh, Europe, right? So you can see in even in Europe, right? 
uh, price is also increasing. You can see the metal ores, the plastics, the timber, even the concrete, cement, and plaster. Yeah, the price is all increasing, right? So when the price of all these construction are increasing, right? Of course, definitely it will affect the price of the new property as well. This one I have to emphasize is on the new property because the new property use all this construction, right? We will we'll, we'll use all this construction material. That's why the price of the new property is always increasing instead of, that's why you can see like, oh, some people say, hey, the price is going to drop, the price is going to drop and maybe another 30%, 50%, right? So I would say unlikely, uh, very unlikely, it will drop until that percentage, right? Because the, the price, the, the price of the construction cost is actually increasing, right? So next, which is the last, that I'm going to mention here, which is the future, right? When we talk about the future, right? Actually, we are talking about the unexpected or uncertain future, right? It's like this picture where we don't know when we will garner this banana skin and fall down, right? So why I mentioned about this? Why I mentioned about this is that because um, we don't know sometimes it's like, for example, it's like the HOC. We don't know when it will be extended. We, we, we don't know, will it be extended? We don't know, will it be stopped? We, we, we don't know, will it be enhanced? And things like that. Uh, seriously, we also, we, we I, would, I can say we, we cannot be very hard to predict it, now, right? Because this is something that's set by the government. It's not set by our, ourselves. Not, it's not set by the developer and things like that, right? So there are things that the government, or the, sorry, there are things that the developer, they cannot actually make decision. For example, right? So let's look at what are the package that we have now uh, by the developer, okay? So these are actually the existing developer package. Of course, there are more, right? So here's just some of the uh, sample. Uh, for example, rebates, all right? So normally when you talk about rebates, normally it applies on the down payment. It applies on the down payment. So maybe, let's say there's a 5% rebate, so you only have to pay for maybe 5% down payment if you are getting a 90% loan margin, right? So there are also like cashback where you can get back certain amount of money uh, after VP or maybe in the in the process of the construction. So it depends on the developer as well. So of course, there are also like free legal fees, free SPA legal fees, free loan and legal fees. And also there will be free stamp duty, no matter it's uh, under HOC or not, some developer are still giving this free stamp duty as well. So zero down payment. So maybe this is like when the rebate is more than 10%, right? So you definitely, you are, enjoy, you are, enjoying, and you are enjoying this zero down payment where you don't have to fuck up, you don't have to fuck out any money, right? So uh, there are, there's also a uh, last one, which is the free maintenance. So some developer are also giving free maintenance, maybe for the first year, for the for the second year, uh, for the first year, or maybe for the first two years, or some even up to five, uh, up to about five years, right? So these are the package that a developer are giving, where we can see in almost everywhere in Malaysia. But this package might change, right? So because all this package, right, I would say it doesn't it, it doesn't appear on the uh, most of the most of the package here, it doesn't appear on the sales and purchase agreement, right? So basically these are just an agreement between you and the developer, right? It's not it, it doesn't uh goes to the go to the government. So for example, one of the um uncertain or the unexpected future I'm going to I'm talk about is that what if all this package will be removed? Right, so we wouldn't know. We really wouldn't know whether this package will be removed or not because this has been, um, this has actually um happened before, right? So, yeah. So this is the things that uh happened before, which is the DIBS, which is a developer interest bearing scheme, where, uh, what is DIBS, right? So, uh, we all know when we are when we are buying and under construct, um, uh, under construction property and uh, or under construction projects. We have to pay for this progressive interest uh, when the when the developer build to the uh, banks, right? So in last time, I will say uh, many years ago, a uh, developer actually have this scheme, which is the BIPS, where the developer will help the buyer to pay for the progressive interest, right? But in 2014, yeah, you can see here, an announcement was made in budget 2014 that the scheme would finally be ended, right? So for now, there are no more DIPS. There, there, are, there are actually no more BIBS in the market for now, right? Because it's, I would say it's banned already. Lah. It's no, no, no longer here. So what if, imagine, now I want you to imagine, what if all these package are no longer in the market? All right, so now you can see, how does it affect you? How does it affect the buyer? So 
for example, I think rebates, rebates has, has the one of the um, highest impact right? because I would say the because of the property, the price of the property are all increasing, are all getting higher and higher. The price is getting higher and higher. So the 10% of the of the property price is also getting more and more. So for example, last time, I think during my parents' time, to buy a condominium is only about 200,000, 200, right? So the 10% of the property price is only 20,000. I think 20,000 is still not that hard to get. Uh. But you can see here now, you want to buy a property in Clang Valley, you want to buy a condominium in Clang Valley, I think easily you can hit about 500 to 600,000. So you need to fork out about 50 to 60,000, which I would th I think is quite a lot already. So imagine if you're buying a 1 million, uh, a property that worth 1 million ringgit, you need to prepare 100,000, which is even more, right? So I think this one is actually uh, very important, right? Also, same goes to cashback because sometimes people use cashback to pay for their money installment. Some people use cashback to pay for their renovation, things like that, right? Because renovation normally, uh, it, it, it involves a lot of cash, okay? So also same goes to all the, all these like legal fees, stamp duty, zero down payment, free maintenance, because all these are costs, right? All these are the expenses, for the for the buyer. Okay, so basically this is what I'm going what, what I'm talking about, which is um if you want to buy a property, I think this now I would say now is the best time, right? Because we still have um pro, we still have a lot of new projects, right? And uh, of course some are selling good, some are selling uh, some are selling quite normal. Okay, but we also can see uh my experience with all these new projects, I, I can see actually some of the developer they are actually changing their package as well, right? Some uh, mostly are actually reducing their rebate and things like that. They are changing their package. So I think developer can also smell, also can smell the market is coming back already. The demand is coming back. Already. That's why they can change, they can amend on their package already. Right. So yeah, let me summarize again. Uh, what are the five key, five, uh, the five reasons why you should buy property now, right? So the first one is HOC, right? HOC will be ended by end of this year, 31st of December in two, uh, 2021. So just be reminded that um, you have the S&P, the sales and purchase agreement have to be stamped before the date, right? Before the date, right? So it's better for you to make a purchase as soon as possible. Uh, but of course, HOC is only applies on um, new projects only. So the second reason is, is because of the OPR rate. Now the OPR rate is at the lowest in history, in Malaysia's history, right? So it's really the best time for you to grab, uh, grab this chance, grab this chance to actually to buy a property. Yeah, because you can actually buy a higher price property or you can actually save a lot of like um, expenses in the, in, the, in the money installment as well. All right. So the third reason is the supplies, right? The supplies of the new property are actually reducing. Yeah, so it will affect the price in the future as well. So also, um, there are also increase in the cost of the construction, right? So the cost of the rock, especially on the raw, raw material like steel and also other things, right? So it will also affect the price of the new property as well. So last but not least is the fifth, which is the unexpected future. Right, so we really don't know what will happen in the future, and what would um, what uh, especially on the new project. I wasn't especially on the new projects, right? Because the package might change, right? So what if next year no more rebates, or what if few years later no more rebates, no more zero down payment, no more free legal fees, no no this and that, right? So we really wouldn't know. So why not just grab this chance to really go and uh. If, if you are capable to buy a property now, maybe you can really, you should really consider now. Okay, so of course, in, it, it's not only on new property, it's also, it's also in the um, secondary market as well. Like for example, uh, previously, it's on, um, yeah, I think yesterday just announced, right? The real property can tax for the property that we, uh, the, buy, uh, the owner holds, if, if it's more than six years, then don't have to pay for, for the real property can tax anymore, right? So all these are the new, are the new I would say all these are the news, right? So you can see that the markets are changing. Um, more things are implemented into this. Uh, more things are imp implemented into this market as well. So we really wouldn't know about the future. So why not just uh, say live in the present? Now we, we see what we have now and really take into consideration, right? So let me take a look at the chat box and see if there is any comment, any Q&A. Uh, so let me open up to Q&A session. Yeah, is, is there any Q&A?
I think so far so good, right? Okay, so yeah, basically that's all today. This is my today's sharing on five reasons why you should buy a property now, right? Especially on these last two months, right? So yeah, that's the end of my sharing today. Yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time. My name is Johnson. Bye-bye.